Look at that. Oh, it's huge. It's giant. Oh. Hey guys, Jay Siemens here. Welcome back to another video. This video is going to be a little different. A little bit of an update video, a bit of an adventure, some sad news, some happy news, but the whole thing is going to be filmed with my cell phone, with my iPhone 14 Pro Max. Uh, I recently got this phone from 4L Communications, who is the sponsor of this video. They're a TELUS dealership, a bunch of locations across Central, Western Canada, a uh, family owned business for 25 years and, and their goal is long lasting relationships with their customers. And I have so many good things to say about my dealings with them. And I'm very thankful they're partnering on this channel and this video. So many of my favorite moments in life aren't captured with the drone or the big camera. They are captured with my cell phone. So that's why I wanted to film this whole video with my cell phone, give you guys some tips and tricks. Yeah, tell you just what's going on. But first off, I think social media is a highlight reel of happy moments, which is amazing. But I think it's really easy to think that everyone's living this dream life and that bad stuff doesn't happen. I'm a very positive person. I, I, I feel like I've shared quite a few glimpses into my life and I'm living my dream. I'm making fishing videos. I am so, so, so blessed, but bad things, unfortunate things do happen. Uh, one of those things happened earlier in January. I actually had just drove nine hours to Saskatoon to go film with the Conrad brothers. But leading up to that trip, my boy Hannon had been just acting a little different. He'd been super thirsty, puked a couple times. We thought it was probably just a stomach bug or something. I was driving to Saskatoon uh, on the phone with my buddy Joe, who's a doctor, talking about fishing related stuff. And I happened to mention Hannon's symptoms and he said, you should probably get him checked out. So Hannon made it to the ER in Kenora. They checked his blood sugar levels and it was through the roof. Your typical blood sugar should be like a five or a six. I think his was somewhere around 25 or 26. And he was in something called diabetic ketoacidosis, DKA it's called. And he had been living with this for, it had been three weeks. We didn't even know, but his blood sugars have been through the roof. So that's a sign of his pancreas not working, not able to break down the sugar. So there he got diagnosed with type one diabetes, which was pretty terrifying. I think what really, made things scary for me is once they diagnosed Han and they said he needs to be airlifted from Kenora to Winnipeg. And as soon as someone needs to be airlifted instantly, I'm like, okay, this is, this is bad. And I had dealt with family members having health issues and stuff, but when it's, when it's your boy, it just, man, the, the feeling in my stomach and also being so far away, not being able to be with my family in this, in this tough time. So Sam and Hannah got airlifted to Winnipeg. I turned around after being in Saskatoon for a couple hours, got to Winnipeg. I will include some, some iPhone footage from, from all of this, but uh, got to Winnipeg. Hannon was hooked up to machines, uh, getting pricked every half an hour to check his blood sugars or taking his blood. It was probably the toughest day of my life. Very, very sad. Seeing my parents sad it was very tough. I will say that in, in that moment, it was my faith in God that, you know, and for Sam too, that pulled us through and, you know, gave us hope. I think it's really easy to feel sorry for yourself in those moments. I know that a lot of people deal with a lot tougher situations with their kids. Um, and yeah, that just kind of puts everything in perspective when you're in the children's hospital and just see what what people have to deal with. It's it's tough. It's very tough when it's your own child. You know, and, and with that as well, I know Sam posted on social media right away that Hannon was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. And with that was just a flood of messages and prayers from you guys. And uh, I get pretty emotional when I think about it, but I, I, I tried to respond to all of them, but I, I just can't thank you guys enough. I know that I share all the happy things that happen on this channel to share something less happy. Uh, it's real life, you know? <laughs> Not everything is fish and trips and roses, but this community that uh, that we've built over the last few years, it was it was very appreciated in these tough times. So thank you guys. Anyone that that reached out, sent a message, comment, any of that, it it means the world. There's a specific moment that sticks in my head, being at the hospital and we captured it on film, and it was you know the night after he'd been diagnosed and they started giving him insulin to bring his blood sugars down. And I was in the other room actually visiting a friend who had. Uh, a kid in the children's hospital as well. And uh, Sam calls me and she's like, you gotta get over here right now. And I came back to the room and there's Han and they just had disconnected him from his machines and they're giving him breakfast. And that was the first glimpse of him being himself, being his happy, happy Han. Hey, Hanny, high five. Hanny, high five. Hopefully <laughs> yeah. One more? Are you scowling? Hanny. High five. Yeah. Hanny, this is a high five. High five, grandma. That's a high five. Yeah. Um, and Sam and I cried happy tears and we're like, okay, this is, this is going to be okay. But after that was a, a few days of diabetic training, now learning how to, you know, monitors, blood sugars, counting carbs. Um, because when you're diabetic type one, your, your 
pancreas can't break down the sugar, so that's why you have to administer insulin. So Hannah's getting needles four times a day. He doesn't even care about the needles anymore. It's been three weeks, he's handling it like a champ. It's gonna be a tough road ahead but I know we are very capable. People deal with a lot worse, so we're gonna, we're gonna be okay. Um, but I just wanted to give you guys an update on that. I wanna share happy stuff too. So another video that was captured with my cell phone just a couple days after we got back from the hospital was I would say Hannon's first fish that he caught. I mean, maybe he didn't set the hook, but he was pulling the tip up line in. Like I said, some of the most precious moments, you know, happy or sad are, uh, are captured on the cell phone. So here's a clip of Hannon catching, we'll call it his first fish. Pull, yes. Keep pulling, keep pulling, Hanny. Grab this now. Pull. Keep pulling, keep pulling. You're doing it. You're doing it. Hannon's first fish. He's kind of pulling it. Pull, pull, pull. Yes. What do you think it is? What do you think it is? Here it comes. Here it comes. Hanny, here it comes. Oh, it's pretty big. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Whoa! Can you look at this? Are we counting this as your first fish ever? Look how fat it is. Hannon! What did you do? <laughs> Are you uncomfortable? No. <laughs> wow. Say bye! Bye. Bye. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, so that was that was a, a cool moment. I don't think Hannon liked the pike when it came over the hole and started splashing him. But the next part of this video is a trip to Uncle Mark's outpost, our first trip um, for the winter. And uh, we were opening up camp. We hadn't been there since November. And then it was mid-January when we went back. So I got a sweet new uh, ski do Expedition snowmobile. I know you guys have been asking, when's the new sled coming? And uh, so this is my first trip and good to get together with the guys and uh, open up camp. So, so enjoy this, uh, this little highlight. Wait, wait, wait for the camera to, okay, you can start viewing it in. <laughs> How'd you like the ride, Uncle Mark? Good. It was yeah. long, it was way longer than it should have been. 37 some kilometers? Yeah. Not bad. Probably got some helmet hair going on, but yeah, that was like uh, a lot. We snowmobiled for town. The other guys drove the ice road down and now we're snowmobiling the last little bit. Some sketchy ice that you gotta do the snowmobile thing, but uh, yeah, we got, we got lots to talk about, but we're loading up a little more gear. I can't believe how much gear I have loaded in here. It's probably more gear than there should be, but this toboggan, I'll show you all about that. Amazing, didn't get any slush or snow in it, or I'm assuming I haven't opened it up yet. And then uh, everything else, and you got the live scope, got all my batteries, rods, chainsaw, auger. It's a beast, we got quite the crew we're gonna be meeting up with. Scotty Green, you know Scotty Green and his kids are there already. And we got Spencer and Danny, obviously Uncle Mark, so. A lot going on in this video. Not really sure what it's going to turn into, but uh, be along for the adventure. Got to look good for the camera, like you cleared all this. So we are back at the outpost, as you probably figured out. We got Danny Latora, we got Mark Haber, we got Spencer Crusoe, we got Scotty Green and his kids, and we got just a to-do list. We actually have our first winter guests ever coming, the folks from Casey's, favorite restaurant in Kenora. Um, anyways, they're coming down. They are gonna be doing a giveaway this summer as well, so stay tuned for that. There's gonna be a contest to get a free trip to Uncle Mark's. But anyways, as you saw, I shoveled off the deck. We're cleared off the solar panels. We got the Dakota Lithium charging. I'll show you that. But yeah, just great to be back. There's always this unknown because the batteries died because obviously the solar got covered and you don't know. It's like, is, is, uh, is everything okay? Did the cabin burn down? Did it flood? But still standing. Ain't that right, Sydney? The mouse went under the deck. <laughs> the mouse went under the deck, she said. <laughs> We're now gathering firewood for the wood stove. We do have propane heat and the heat pump, but nothing beats sitting by a crackling wood fire. So 
Found a couple of fallen dead trees and Scotty's got the chainsaw rip and putting his kids to work. Ain't that right? Firewood has been acquired. Uncle Mark has been acquired and we are trying the earthquake log splitter for the first time. Electric. Woo! You split that log, Mark. Beautiful. That's some nice split wood. Well, I'm, I'm told these panels are self-heating, but we got them cleared off. Worked out really good, better than I expected. That was one of the toughest jobs that I was thinking we'd have this trip. So that's really good. We need some sunshine. It's tough with the, you know, when snow covers it, it's kind of need to be here to keep the, the batteries going and everything, but it's good. The batteries are pretty much charged up now. And then depending on we have to turn the solar on before we leave, but it will be nice. There's a little bit of an ice layer on the uh, panel still. So that'll melt off eventually, but looking good. Spencer's barbecue and some food. It's so good to be back. morning from Uncle Mark's outpost. Had a good night. It got toasty between the propane heat and the wood stove. It was great. Like I've only spent three nights at the outpost. So every night down here is a treat. So what we did yesterday when we got here, I know I mentioned this a little bit, is we uh, we hooked up the Dakota Lithiums. When they get too dead, then it's a little bit tougher to, uh, to get them charged back to a point that they even register on the system. So we took all of the chargers that come with the batteries and we hook them up just to get them above that certain point and then we can run them through the generator. Now, I just turned the generator off. See those flashing lights? That means we got solar generating. So I know I've talked about this a bit, but these two white units here, these are the chargers. These little screens up here tell us what's going on. So I can tell right now that our solar is charging. Not fast, but it is charging. And other than that, we had a mouse trap. Oh yeah. There's one buddy. We had winterized and drained this water system, so we're not gonna mess with that at all. And this is what kept it warm. This this, uh, this propane heater kept it warm off 100 pounder. We had this electric heater on Bluetooth and I could see from my phone that it was keeping it warm. But once the batteries died, then the propane kept things warm. So we had the backup. In an ideal world, there'd be enough solar that that would just keep the room warm. But uh, obviously with the snow covering, the solar didn't work. So this propane heater has been great. But anyways, the lithiums were nice and warm and happy. So ready to take a charge. That is something you don't want to charge the batteries when they're absolutely frozen. So that's why when we came here, it was warm already. So we were able to charge the batteries right away. But uh, like I said, we got guests coming in a couple days. So we are probably going to run the generator again just to make sure it's topped up because just there's a lot of cloudier days in the winter, right? So just want to make sure it's prepared. We did run the generator through the night just to make sure the batteries were maxed out knowing we're leaving today. And now the solar's charging, so we'll be able to, uh, you know, watch it remotely. Hopefully things stay charged up. The guests are coming back in two days, so it, sh it should be good. Anyways, let's see what the rest of the crew's up to. We're gonna try hanging the deer. We're just trying to figure out where the studs are. This is not the monster that Spencer shot this fall. This is one from your grandpa, you said? Yeah, this is uh, my grandpa shot this probably 15 years ago. Oh, um, yeah, we're gonna hang this one and then we'll get my mount uh, back. One there. The summer. One there. Ooh, did I get it? We'll get her straight. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, awesome. I definitely love Uncle Mark's in the summertime, being here in the boat, but there's something about the winter. It is just, it's so quiet. There's no traffic down here. It feels like you are very, very isolated. Unfortunately, at this point, there's always work involved when we come down, but soon I think it'll get to the point where I can just come down and enjoy it without the work. I mean, always tinkering, making sure things are working, but this time for opening up camp, it does take, take a little bit, but nice to have the crew out here and trying to get the trail, trail camera set up as well. But yeah. Hey, what you doing? What you doing? He's got a full burger. Look at this. Hey, he's got a full burger he's eating. Oh my gosh. That squirrel just left with a full burger in his mouth. I'm not even joking. That was insane. There he goes.
Well guys, I'm gonna give you one last look at the cabin, film a little slow-mo with the iPhone, and uh, we're gonna start our journey back. So yeah, we got camp opened up. We just had our first guests spend a couple days there. Things went very smooth, so happy about that. Last but not least on the topics of cell phones and filming is I just wanted to give you guys some tips because I think I get so many questions about what camera should I buy. Like I say so many times, the best camera is the one you have with you as I'm trying to prove with this video. Let's give you a couple easy tips and tricks. But the first one is just holding your phone, how you hold it. There's so many times I see people just Holding their phone extended, arms are shaking, smooth footage is so key. So iPhones have amazing built-in stabilization, but something you can do is, here's a couple ways, tucking your arms in and then holding it with two hands. When I'm holding it, I'm kind of flexing it with my fingers and kind of putting opposite pressure. So I'm pushing forwards with one and backwards on the other corner. And when you do that, it just, it stabilizes everything. You kind of lock up, you tuck your arms in and you get smooth footage, whether you're filming vertical or horizontal. Another thing is just understanding the settings. I know the new iPhones, you can film in something called a log format, which is an ungraded flat video file. Uh, it gives you a little more data. That's really good if you wanna get a little more creative in the editing and do the color grading um, as well, knowing what camera to use. A lot of these phones have three cameras, a wide angle, you know, your one zoom and your two zoom just playing with those different angles and getting creative that, you know, the storytelling is gonna be king, but with those lenses, you can tell the story differently. Also, you know, adding slow-mo. So when you are filming slow-mo on these phones, you know, having lots of light. If you try to film slow-mo in a dark space, it's gonna look very grainy and bad. Um, and I would say the last tip I wanna give, if you wanna bring your video quality to the next level is good audio. So you got your phone, and let's say you wanna film some fishing videos with strictly your phone, getting one of these little mics. So for this whole talking portion here, I use this little zoom recorder. There's also these task cams I use. You know, you buy them for 100, 200 bucks and then you have good audio because there's nothing worse watching a video than bad audio. People can get over if the video is a little pixelated or maybe zoomed in a little far, not the right resolution, but bad audio will turn people off. And over all of that stuff, make sure you have a story to tell because I just had my first clip go viral like nothing I've ever had before. It was a clip of a pike coming out of the hole. It was filmed on my 4L Communications iPhone. It is about to hit 100 million views on Instagram, which I can't even comprehend. Oh, it's huge. It's giant. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at that fish. Wow. That's a way to kick off the tip-up season. It once again reinforces the story is king and it's not the camera gear. So anyways, thank you so much for your prayers for Hannon. Thank you uh, to 4 l Communications for making this video possible. And uh, yeah, it's all up and up from here. See you guys. Okay, wait, one more thing. This video is not done. It's not over. I read the comments, I listened to my wife, and here is our beautiful golden retriever named Tutter. Tutter, say hi to the internet. Are you happy, Sam? I'm happy. <laughs>